Well, hello, friends. It's good to be back with you for our midweek Bible study. And we've been talking about uh, foundational doctrines of the Christian faith, foundational doctrines in the Bible. And I want to look at uh, a doctrine, and it's a truth. Uh, it's just We're going to actually quote the actual scripture. I want you to turn to 1 John, the fourth chapter, verses 7 through 12. We're going to focus on verse 8. And we're going to talk about God being love and the love of God. And I would say that I would not have wanted to start with this. And you may say, well, why wouldn't you? It's really a wonderful starting place. But many times people, this is a doctrine that's been abused. It's either been ignored or it's been abused and people take it, I guess, the wrong way or they, they minimize God's holiness, they minimize His wrath, they minimize uh, His righteous standards. And uh, this, this teaching that God is love becomes some squishy kind of thing that really, really doesn't mean much of anything. It's just a sentimental feeling. And that's not what we want uh, to, to convey, and that's not how we need to understand this. But we do want to talk about God is love because that if we really grasp that, it, it revolutionizes our relationship with our family members, with, uh, with well, uh, people out in the community, certainly with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. We'll ask for His help, and then we will uh, get busy uh, studying His Word. And uh, I do have some good news. The, the church banner is in. Uh, I have uh, meant to do this a few days ago, and I've, I've yet to do it, and I'll try to make sure it happens today, get uh, the final uh, thing on the, the permanent church sign in to, to Charles to, to sh uh, share with uh, his sign person. We start working on the permanent sign. We have, uh, I do ask for prayer for me as I am having great difficulty with my left knee, which is supposed to be my good knee, okay? Maybe I've just put too much stress and strain on it, and I think I damaged some tendons in it, and uh, don't even know how I did it. I didn't feel a pop or anything. Uh, icing it down has helped, but I'm really not. not money's a little tight right now. I, I really don't need to break down and go to the dock. If I have to, I will. So would you just pray for that need to be met? Uh, if the Lord wants to use doctors to heal me, then pray that He would provide the means to go. Or if that's uh, not His plan, I mean, I just know He can supernaturally touch me in both my knees and help me get back on track so that I do my job each day and to serve you and take care of my family. So if you would pray about that, and I want to pray with you about your needs. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, thanking you for this day, thanking you for your word, thanking you that you are love, and we help me tonight to co convey that as I need to, to, to those who are listening. I, I want to convey it with inaccuracy, not say things that aren't true about you, I thank you for blessing our podcast and allowing it to go around the world. Thank you for new friends that we picked up in other parts of the world who are listening. And uh, thank you for those who have been faithfully listening all along. And we just pray a blessing upon everyone who hears the word tonight, that you'd open our hearts and minds up to hear it and receive it. I pray for healing for myself and for financial provision. And, and I pray that not only for myself and my knee here and uh, but for each person that's listening, that you would meet our needs physically, financially, mentally, emotionally. Help us to serve you and obey you. Uh, thank you for those in our area who uh, have gotten involved with uh, local issues and taking a stand for justice and righteousness. We, we pray that you will uh, continue to prosper and bless their efforts and help them to keep their eyes turned to you. Uh, meet the needs of, again, each person listening, of each one in this congregation. We'll give you the praise and glory, for we ask it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Or Amen. Okay. So let's look at the fourth chapter of the book of 1 John. And it is here that we read that the apostle says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent His only Son into the world so that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. 
No one has seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and His love is perfected in us. I mentioned in my prayer the podcast, Business and Spirituality, uh, and it's in the Imperative Ministries podcast on Podpoint. It's on my YouTube page. And Bruce Pagano, who is someone I was in a, a, a church planning class with last year, Bruce has been helpful. And he has written a book called Three Commands, Jesus' Fulfillment of the Law Through Love. And I've been reading this book. I've not totally finished it, but I'm going to go ahead and have Bruce on my podcast. We'll be recording that tomorrow. I plan to keep reading more in the book. But he deals with this passage here in uh, 1 John 4, 8. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. And God is love. You know, uh, Jesus is, uh, that's the thing that separates him from the God of, our God from the God of other religions, is that he expresses, you know, how we ought to interpret and define love. But there's a lot of talk in the world about love, and humans will often identify things in a way that will, uh, or define them in a way that um, suits themselves. And uh, there was um, A.W. Tozer, my, my friend Bruce mentions in his book here, he quotes from Tozer, and, and here's a, and it's a good warning, and I will say my friend Bruce does a great job in his book here of pointing out that um, while Tozer seems to be contradicting what my friend is saying, he's, uh, or, or going at it in a way that might contradict, uh, but Tozer's giving some good warnings. There's always, when we share a certain truth, uh, there's, it's easy to misinterpret that truth or, or take it in a way that is unhelpful or apply it in a way that's unhelpful. So Tozer was saying, and I'm quoting from my friend uh, Bruce's book here, equating love with God is a major mistake that has produced much unsound religious philosophy and has brought forth a spate of vaporous poetry completely out of accord with the Holy Scriptures and altogether of another climate from that of historic Christianity. Had the apostles declared that love is what God is, we would be forced to infer that God is what love is. If literally God is love, then literally love is God. And we are in all duty bound to worship love as the only God there is. If love is equal to God, then God is only equal to love. And God and love are identical. Thus we destroy the concept of personality in God and deny outright all His attributes save one. And that one we substitute for God. And, and as my friend Bruce points out, Tozer's, Tozer's got a point here. We, we have to be careful with this. But then there's some others, such as uh, Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown. It was a commentary that I use a lot from these three gentlemen wrote this. And they point out that in the, the Greek language, which is what the scripture was written in, um, there's no Greek article before the word love, but there is before God. So we cannot translate love as God. God is fundamentally and essentially love, not merely that He is loving, okay? So, you know, we do know that man is not loving, God is loving. So, but, you know, he just points out here, he says, John's argument would not stand for the conclusion from the premises then would be this, this man is not loving, God is loving, therefore he knoweth not God in so far as God, as God is loving. Still he might know him in all his other attributes, but when we take love as God's essence, the argument is sound. If you don't love, you don't know God at all, because God is love. Okay, God is not just loving, God is love. Okay, And you know, here's, here's the thing we can point out is that I think Jameson Fawcett Brown are pointing out that uh, well, to, I get Tozer's concern here, but God is love. Uh, the scriptures explicitly say that. And love is not God. Okay, there could be types of love that are not necessarily of God. There's a lot of uh, poets, as, as Tozer mentioned. There's even songwriters of our day and time. There's even New Age people who will quote from the Bible, but they're quoting it out of context and it's just some sort of this ethereal kind of all oh, touchy-feely kind of love. That's not what we're talking about. God is love. God's love, and it says in this passage of Scripture, is what caused Him to send Jesus, His one and only Son. And that word one and only 
depending on what translation you have, uh, the one and only Son, or the um, God sent Him, or His only Son, or some some translations may. Uh, the idea is that um, Jesus was eternally God's Son. He's always been God's Son, because He's always been. There's a hierarchy in the God the Father, Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit. They're all one. Not three separate gods. They make up one God. But Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. And He's uh, always been with the Father. He's always existed with them. And uh, he, uniquely, He's different in that He's always been with Him. And yet, you know, He's eternally been with Him. Eternity is not just for, from this point forward forever, but eternity reaches back the other way. Excuse me for yawning. I don't know why I am. I got a, a good sleep last night. I don't want to make you sleepy. I'm sorry. But um, Jesus has always existed with the Father. And, uh, and it was part of God's plan to send Jesus, to die for our sins. That was love. That was the greatest love. That Jesus would be that propitiation that would satisfy God's wrath. I talk a lot about God's holiness. Well, that's, that's what we're talking about there. But what we want to point out is that while God is love, and He totally and definitely is, but there are other aspects of God. The Bible doesn't say um, that, well, let's put it this way. The Bible does, does say that God is a jealous God. But God isn't jealousy. Okay, the Scripture never says God, you know, God is jealousness. It doesn't say that. Scripture it says he's a jealous God, but he's not jealousy. He is wrathful, but he is not wrath. We need to keep that in mind. Yes, there's a place called hell. God's going to send people; they're going to be punished there. Uh, and that, but what you need to be encouraged about, he does that as an act of his love. Okay, I mean these people that have been wounded and hurt and damaged by so many evil people. They're going to get what they have coming to them if they don't repent. But see, God is love. If they repent of that, truly repent, and by the way, repenting doesn't mean that they get to say, oh, I'm sorry and miss the consequences. No. If they hurt people, they have to go to jail. Uh, they have to make things right with the people that they hurt. Uh, they, yeah, they're not allowed to just say, oh, I asked you God to forgive me. Now I'm just going to go and do what I'm, you know, live my life now, and I can go preach, or I can go sing, or I can just go serve. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. Okay? There's some things that you do you are forever and ever done with. You never go back and do that anymore. Okay? Uh, now sometimes you can. Sometimes over a period of time you can repent, and, uh, you know, depending on what the violation is, over time, uh, over a long period of time, you may show yourself faithful and that you've truly repented. But, but the good news is that, yes, God's love, He can restore the offender. And that's an act of His love. But if He doesn't, that person doesn't repent, God will, it's an act of His love that He will judge that person in wrath. So, you know, there's a clear distinction between what God is and what He's like. And this is a thing called essence and identity. And, and Bruce points this out in his book. And I'm not just trying to quote from Bruce's book. I'm also going to the scriptures here. But I appreciate my friend Bruce and how he's done a good job of uh, pointing out this truth of God is love. And so, you know, God is, like we said, he is, let me just, I, I love this quote that he has. It is love that determines, defines, and directs God's character. That means instead of jealousy, we get selfless jealousy. So, yes, God's a jealous God, but His love causes Him to have a selfless jealousy. It's not all about, there's no sinfulness or no pettiness in His jealousy. He's jealous for you. He doesn't want you worshiping other gods. He doesn't want you, uh, you know, dishonoring His name. And that's because... To honor His name and to worship Him and Him alone is the best thing for you. That jealousy is not some petty kind of jealousy that a human might have. It's, look, I care much about you. I want you to do the right thing, and I'm jealous over you. You know, so, and instead of anger from God, we get righteous anger. You know, the wrath of God isn't God getting mad like a human being would be and throwing some chairs and yelling and screaming and cursing. No. No, no, no. God's patience and loving kindness cause him to be very patient and not 
not immediately usually judge sin, but give people time to repent. But when He does come down, we get His righteous anger. When He does come down in anger, divine justice. We get that instead of regular just justice. A lot of people want justice. I want divine justice because God will do what's right, fully right. And He gives us a just wrath instead of just wrath for wrath's sake. So it's because God, as love, that informs all of His other characteristics. So you need to keep that in mind. When God is judging people, He's not just some mean judge or, or, or unfeeling or uncaring judge. But even in His holiness, love is directing Him to do what He does. And real love isn't just some squishy kind of, you know, this mystical, emotional thing. Love requires that we make hard actions and, and hard choices and we even have to discipline our children or sometimes even have discipline in the church and it's all my love. So, you know, lo the love of God it informs all of His other characteristics. It's not, uh, we can't just say that, uh, God, let's put it this way, God doesn't simply love, He is love. And because of that, he can't respond any other way except out of love. So it's love that drives God's actions. And since we are God's people, guess what? That's to happen in our life too. Love is to drive our actions and to help us, okay? To cause us to live for the Lord. So we need to understand that. Okay? That is vital. You know, the Father had deep love with the Son from eternity past. And his love and their love that they had together helps us. Okay, you know there was um, we 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 just, we just need to see that that God is love. James Robinson, who was uh, a popular preacher some years ago, especially on the Southern Baptist circuit, and this has been a good while back. He's had a, a TV show on some of the Christian uh, you know networks, and I don't say that I agree with James on everything, but. James had said something that, you know, he really began to, people began to get upset with him, especially certain religious leaders when he began to preach God is love and God uh, wants us to love one another, not hate each other. And, you know, what's going on with that? And, uh, and there's been a lot of that. Uh, there's a lot of hatred and animosity sometimes between various churches, not just denominations, but this one church sort of doesn't like this other church. And, uh, and instead of praying for people and, and being burdened for them, we get vindictive. And we don't have to be that way. We shouldn't be that way. We're here to love our fellow brothers and sisters. We're to love lost people and want to see them get saved. Now, this passage doesn't touch on that completely. It doesn't say it exactly that way. But then again, if God would love His only Son and yet love us enough to send His blessed, sweet, precious Son to die for us, how much more should we share the gospel with others and love others? So God is love, my friends. And we need to focus on that. And we need to let love uh, permeate our life. And, and it's, it's the, a motivating factor for our action. So I see love at Central Baptist Church. We want to keep that. We want to love new people that come in, people who may be very different from us. But we want to love them want to love those who are not yet ready to come back to church, but they are still listening and watching online. We want to pray for them, and we want to love them. So I just, just want to get that across to you today. God is love. Does love permeate every part of your life? And if it doesn't, then go talk to the Father about it. Go to Jesus. Ask Jesus to give you the Father's love. The Holy Spirit will work in your life and make you love others. Own it. Don't be afraid to own it. Say, Father, I'm hating certain people or certainly don't like them to the point of, of it bordering on sinfulness. And You don't have to like everybody, by the way, but you do have to love them. But sometimes that dislike can start to boil into hate if we're not careful or certainly a lack of love. So uh, fear, by the way, stops us from loving. I, I preached a sermon on that I believe uh, either early this year or late last year. That's fear a lot of times is, is, is the, really the opposite of love because fear causes us to hate and to dislike and to react. So we, perfect love casts out fear. Fear is the opposite of love.
I just thank you that you've tuned in to listen. My time is up, but may the Lord bless you and keep you. I look forward to seeing you Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for Sunday school and 11 a.m. for worship. God bless you.